What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. Today we're focusing on the 2016-2017 uh, New York Rangers, part of the uh, team preview, season preview, whatever you want to call it. Um, I I like what the Rangers are doing. They've infused some youth in the organization. They've been active all off season, going back making the Zabanajad trade. Obviously, when you lose a guy like Keith Yandel, it's kind of tough to have a good off season. But make the Zabanajad trade. Pavel Buchnevich is coming over, and now obviously they've signed Jimmy Vesey. Buchnevich and Vesey, I'm, I'm very, very excited for. And again, I've watched Jimmy Vesey play a lot over the last four years here in Boston. He's going to be a 20-goal, 50-point guy. He's not Patrick Kane. But he's a 23-year-old forward that can help out. Likewise, Buchnevich is 21, and I think he's going to be a, a nice, you know, middle-to-top-six forward. Do I think he's going to be... The second coming of Evgeny Malkin? No. But I think they can help this forward core. And anytime you get young legs in the organization, I think it's a, a, a definitely a positive. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start with the forwards. I've already talked to two of the young forwards I'm very excited about. And actually three of the veterans of Bonajet. I don't think people realize how good Zabanajet is. I think on a stage like the, you know, bright lights of Broadway, people be like, oh, shit, this kid can play. Um, but neither hand nor there. I think they've got a good mix of size and not size. What do I mean? You know, you got six foot five Kevin Hayes, six foot three Chris Kreider, six foot four Rick Nash, six foot two JT Miller, and uh, a five foot four Nathan Gravy and a five foot seven Matt Zuccarello. Zuccarello, I think, is going to be a very, really good fit in there. Um, power play, which is like saying no shit, Sherlock. I think he, we know how good he is. Hopefully, he, you know, keeps his head straight and doesn't have any more you know, skull injuries. That is not, that was a very scary situation. It was a year or two ago when he had the skull fracture. Um, and again, I, I, I love the smaller forwards. And going a step further with Nate Gerby, that was an under-the-radar signing. You know, him and Michael Grabner. You know, they're both established NHLers that can really round out your top six and, you know, give you a different look. That's pretty good. That's a pretty, pretty good look to have. Um, but, you know, they've also got plenty of young kids coming up. We saw with Jesper Fass, do I happen to like him. I like Lindberg as well. But I think JT Miller is going to be the key for them this season with their forwards. I mean, you know, we know how good their step on is at center. But if Miller can step up and take that next leap, playing with his boy, VZ, who he yeah, was excellent with at the 2013 World Juniors, um, I think the, this Rangers team is going to be even tougher to beat. You know, there will be a very, very tough out. And, uh, you know, again, I I like the way the team's constructed. You know, the, these forwards are amazing. Well, I like the way the forwards are constructed. I'll get to the blue line in a second. But, you know, I, I think Kevin Hayes will bounce back in year three. I think my fellow Massachusetts native, Chris Kreider, will have a very solid year. And I think Rick Nash isn't dead yet. Of course, I, I mean, he had 40 goals two years ago. So, again, he's he's not dead. Um, but we'll see uh, what kind of productivity they get out of uh, Nash. And my thing is, if he plays to a level where he becomes tradable, they shouldn't trade him for the sake of trading him. Just throwing that out there. And I think uh, Tanner Glass will win the uh, Hart Trophy. Art Ross uh, might even put him on defense win the Norris Trophy. And, uh, you know, Lester Pearson and the Messier Leadership Award. Con Smythe, he's going to win it all. Tanner Glass, heard here first. Um, so, again... Outside of Tanner Glass, really like their forwards. Um, going a step further on defense, eh, love Ryan McDonough. Kevin Klein's a hell of a player. Good actor, too, by the way. Las Vegas, very good movie. Um, I like Brady Shea. I think he's a very talented young man. But this defense, Dan Girardi and Mark Stahl, I mean, they, I know how Rangers fans feel. The Bruins had... The Bruins have Kevin Miller and had Dennis Seidenberg, so I, I get it. But, Jesus, it's, it's painful. And, again, I, I like Girardi as a player, but when you look at the money he's making, you say to yourself, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We can't afford to keep Yandel, but we're paying this guy how much money? And, again, I think Yandel was a fantastic fit on that blue line. I mean, you know, I think he was he the team MVP last year, as voted on by the fans. I think he was. And he was, you know, one of their leading assist getters, one of their, you know, power, one of their, and he, he did lead their defense in scoring. 
and, you know, really made life easy for their young forwards in terms of moving the puck out of the zone, getting the transition, getting the breakout going. He's gone. And you don't just replace a guy like Keith Yandel. You know, guys like Keith Yandel don't just grow on trees. They do. I, I think every NHL GM would plant them in their backyard. So, again, I, I think one on, another under-the-radar sign, well, Chris Summers, not a bad player. And uh, Adam Clendenin, good friend of the power play. I think he's, uh, he's bounced around a lot, you know. Got drafted by Chicago, traded to Vancouver, traded to Pittsburgh, waved, was in Anaheim for a minute, and then was in Edmonton. That was all in the last two years, so five teams in two years. Uh, maybe Broadway is where it happens for him. You know, again, he's – watch his home run passes, Rangers fans. He's got a good offensive uh, – a you know, good breakout game. Good – and that leads to offensive chances. I just put my words out of order. It happens. Um, but again, outside of McDonald's, blue line really isn't uh, anything special, and that could be the difference, I think, between them being, you know, the, the favorites in the Eastern Conference, or, you know, a favorite in the Eastern Conference, and we'll get to that in a second, and, you know, being the separate seed, but, you know, we'll see what happens. They don't have a ton of tradable assets, but I just think it would be funny if, like, a really, really good defense became available, and they traded VZ for him, so VZ goes through all this to become a free agent, Signs with the Rangers, and it's like, oh, you know, player X, Y, and Z became available, so pack your bags, Jimmy. But either way, uh -huh. we'll see what happens in terms of how they put their defense. Finally, goaltending. King Henrik is King Henrik. He's a handsome guy. He's a goalie of the New York Rangers. His wife is, you know, a smoke. So, yeah, life doesn't suck. And... Be, him being one of the best goalies on the planet means, and you know, no matter what position the Rangers are in going into the playoffs, they can go on a lengthy playoff run. He's that good. Now, some asshole is going to throw it to the me. My counter argument is the Boston Bruins won the 2011 Stanley Cup with the 37-year-old Tim Thomas. I think the Rangers can do the same with Hank. You know, to I mean, first of all, he'll be 35 in the season. You know, uh, in March. 34 and 2 and it's 35 much. Takes care of himself, puts in the preparation, puts in the hours. I see no reason why he can't be an elite goalie into the late 30s. And, you know, could this Rangers team use some, you know, revamping around the board? Sure. But their goaltending position is not an area of concern. And quite frankly, backing up Lundqvist and Anti Randa is a very solid NHL backup. He's not anything more than that, but. Him playing 15 to 20 games a year isn't a bad thing. That's not a weakness for the team. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But again, I like the forwards. I've always been a King Henrik guy. Defense leaves a lot to be concerned. Where are the Rangers in the Eastern Conference? I got top four teams in the East: the reigning champs, the two Florida teams, the Washington Capitals. The Rangers and Islanders are right there, five and six. Uh, on paper, I think the Islanders are better, but the ranges are better in goal, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's all I got in this episode of the Power Play with CJ. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the off season and beyond. Later, guys.